Hi. Yes, it's Sherry from Sherry's Sip and Think Chat. Wow, it's been almost two months. <laughs> ah, well, the sun was shining. It's a beautiful day today, and I got home at a reasonable time, so I'm outside. My feet are in the grass. Yes, I'm barefoot. And uh, I figured, what the hell, I might as well come on and see how everybody's doing. I've got my new Sip and Think mug in, so that's what I'm going to use today is my my red one with the black trim. So that's what I'm doing today. Everyone else is doing all right? I have some apple cider vinegar in there. So I figured, okay, Sherry, it's been a while. You need to get back on here. Although I'm working my ass off, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm so working my ass off every goddamn day. So if you're not working, please enjoy it. Live it up while you can, okay? Because chances are someone's going to be on the opposite spectrum, right? I brought my pop affirmations out with me. So we'll see if we can find some good affirmations. <laughs> it's almost like every day something something bad or new comes up, right? And it's almost like, yeah, why not at this point? But we have to remember that we have to still try to put good vibes out because it's going to come back around to us, okay? So no matter how hard it gets, and I know it can be frustrating, and believe me, I fly off the handle every now and then my damn self, you know? But it takes me a lot to get there. It really, really does. So when you see Sherry, especially on live, flipping the handle, it's because there's only so much that a human can take and they need to release it and they need to get it off their chest too. They're human. And for all the Debbie Downers out there, you are not perfect. And so you can sit there and talk about everybody and anybody all you want about what they're doing and what they should be doing but you know what you need to really look yourself in the mirror and see what you're doing so I don't have time for I really don't have time for people that are just gonna be negative and talk down and always have something to say like that knife throwing shit it's almost like so no matter what I do you got something to say about it right it's like nah I don't got time for that if I lived my life based on all the knives you threw at me, I wouldn't be where I am today. But now that I know how you really feel about me and what you really think of me, I just know moving forward that you're not part of that equation, you know? And you don't need to tell people this. Just do it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I see the negative stuff, but... I'm not holding you to what you did when you were in your 20s, so if you were doing it now, that's a different story, but, you know, if you were doing that shit in your 20s, man, shit's changed since then. Shit, this whole year has changed for people. I don't know anybody who is right in the head. Like, if you can bring me someone that is completely right in the head and Miss Gouda Two Shoes and all perfect, please. Bring them to the forefront. There is no such thing. Why else would you need faith? Why else would you need to ask God for forgiveness? Right? I've seen people do 10 times worse. And let me remind you. Let me remind you. Are you all Def Jeffrey Dahmer's? No. Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, obviously he had a purpose to be on this earth. Would I want to be his friend? Hell to the no. But he was put on this earth for a purpose. We had to learn from it. How many policies and procedures were put in place because of that? I have this one that popped out, by the way. So 
let's pop this dream popper. <laughs> Follow your desire as long as you live. I don't know how to pronounce this. P-T-A-H hyphen Hotep, H-O-T-E-P. I don't know if following your desire is a good thing right now, but okay. It's the affirmation they want us to follow. Follow our desires. I guess first you need to find out is, do you have a desire? Do you know what a desire is? All right, let's do our affirmators from Knock Knock. I gotta shuffle these. I was actually looking online for um, a different set so I could do different ones. So yeah, I was doing that. And I'm so excited. I finally ordered for my anniversary. Yes, my anniversary was yesterday. But I ordered for myself, even though it was our wedding anniversary. I uh, <laughs> ordered for myself a whole new patio set. And my husband says, how are you going to fit it out here? I said, you and your nephew are going to take everything off the patio. And I'm going to set up my patio set. Okay? Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I granted some of the stuff coming in I'm gonna have to put together myself but it's just if I wait on someone else to do it it's not gonna get done and so I just have learned that some people are like that you know it's almost like I accept him for who he is and he kind of accepts me for who I am so Shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling, shuffling. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I like kind of envisioned what I wanted my oasis to be like, but we'll see. You know, there's only so much one person can do. Only so much you can do. I actually have been trying to learn TikTok. Actually, I started watching it last week and I felt like, oh my God, I am becoming like obsessed with it. And I was like, couldn't put it down. I was like, what the hell? This is crazy. It was funny. But then after a while, you start hearing the same songs and stuff, and you're like, like, are they coming out with new stuff, or are they copycatting everybody else? And it's like, okay. I got bored with that real quick. This one won't go back in. I don't want this one. Can I reshuffle, please? We already had this one. We already had this one, and I cannot... I'll tell you what it is, but I, I'm seriously going to reshuffle. This one says the ideal partnership again. God. I tell you, these affirmators, when I'm shuffling them and like when, when they fly out or whatever, it's the spirits, I'm telling you, it's the spirits. They tell me what they want me to know and I tell it to you, right? But we'll read this one and then we're gonna shuffle again, okay? Okay? Because we're not going to focus on the ideal partnership. We never get anywhere with the ideal partnership. <sighs> I am a rare and precious find, and my brilliance will be reflected back to me when I am paired with a true match. My ideal partnerships and working relationships are easy and free-flowing. I deserve greatness because I am greatness. And to paraphrase Rummy, what I'm looking for is also looking for me. In fact, he or she might be paraphrasing Rummy right now. Hmm. We've had this one before. So apparently I have not listened to my spirits and they wanted me 
to put this out there again. But I'm gonna shuffle the deck without this, or do you think I should shuffle it with it and see if it comes back out again? Let's just put it in the middle. What? Let's just put this shit in the middle. I swear, I swear. You know, there are some things that I can argue till I'm blue in the face, and other things I'll just say, okay, fine, and let it go. It was so funny, right? Like, my husband and I, we had our eighth an um, eight year anniversary yesterday for a wedding, but he was like, God, I feel like it's been longer than that. And I'm like, that's because we've known each other forever. And believe you me, we used to argue all the time. We used to argue all the time. Argue, I I'm serious. To the point where friends of his and friends of mine would be like yelling at him. Just tell her you love her. Just tell her you care about her. <laughs> They'd be like, Sherry, he doesn't want you. He doesn't want you. He'd be like, yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And then when I married him, they were like, holy fucking shit. She wasn't lying. I know what I'm talking about. But everybody else seems to think they know what's best for me. <sighs> okay. What's this? Ooh. I got two. Two. Right. <laughs> We've had this one before. This one, okay, this is how they came out. There was two of them stuck together, right? So this one says trust. Look at the sharks. Uh, and walk in, the balance beam, and the little mouse, blind mice. What's that, a bear? Okay. I trust that everything will be okay in the end. Partly because I simply know it in my gut but also because it's way more fun to live with trust and confidence than to be a defensive wiener. You hear the dogs? That's my, uh, one of my neighbors, which is really like my sister. <laughs> Anyways, so then we have behind it, right? So here's trust. So this is at the forefront, and at the back, right behind it, is personal growth, which we've seen before too. So we're still growing, we're still working on our personal growth. As I move toward greater consciousness, I feel old thoughts and habits fall away, like training wheels on a bike. They helped me to get to where I am now, but now that I can ride, I don't need those slow and crummy wheels, except when I'm making bike analogies. We're all transforming. We're all transforming. We're constantly transforming. But your personal growth is backing your trust. I could go deeper if you'd like. The bear is balancing. He's trying to balance, right? but he's blindfolded. He is holding on to a stick to help with his balance, but he's got a rat or a mouse sitting on one end. Hmm. He's got one shark with its mouth open, ready to bite, but it doesn't necessarily reach him. And then he's got two other shark fins just sitting out the water, right? So these sharks don't even see that he's here, but this one does. But this one decided to take a bite at the bear, but he went too soon. And you've got a fin on each side of the rope. And why do you have one mouse here 
but not one over here. So through all this chaos, without him having his eyes open, he's blinded. He's blinded by all these things. He has to have trust within himself. But to have that trust, as he moves forward, right, while he trusts himself, he's growing personally. That's what I got from that. We could go into what the bear spirit means or the mouse spirit. Would you say that that stick that he's got with one mouse on the other side, does he really need that for balance? Is an extension of himself. He's got mouse and rats on one side, but not on the other. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, have a sip. So, I wanted to tell you guys about. I went to an event today. It was a virtual event. Typically, I go to a. Um, the Dunes Club for the Women's Club, and they do a book and author event every year. And we get to meet the authors of the books, they, they tell a story about the books, but today we had a, um, it was virtual, right? But I was so intrigued by one of the authors that I'm actually like, oh shit, I'm gonna get the book, or I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do the audio book. Me personally, I really have to be concentrating if I'm sitting there reading. If you didn't know, when I was younger, I couldn't read. So I was in a special needs reading class and they would take me out of the classroom to learn how to read. Well, so it takes me a little bit longer to comprehend the words uh, that I'm reading, right? Anyways. I started with, I downloaded like an audio book app. I listened to my first audio book, which mind you, I thought was great. And it was great that I could do it audio because now I'm like, oh shit, I can like be doing stuff and listen to it audio. And I'm gonna look up these three authors that I met through virtual today. And I'm going to listen to the audiobook. Now I have my cousin and my girlfriend. They love reading. They're, they've got like, you know, reading groups. They, they just love, love reading. My daughter loves reading too. And they encouraged me with the audio app, which I was like, oh great, thanks. So now I feel like I'm part of something. But anyways, so the three authors that, uh, we met with today one is Deborah Goodrich Royce she her, let's see her first novel was Finding Mrs. Ford debuted in 2019 to rave reviews Deborah serves on many governing and or advisory boards including the Avon Theater the American Film Institute New York Botanical Garden the Preservation Society of Newport and countless others. She and her husband restored the Ocean House Hotel, which if you don't know, it's a really famous, it's like a famous hotel in Rhode Island and Westerly, um, and the Deer Mountain Inn. Deborah holds a BA in French and Italian from Lake Erie College. In an earlier life, she was an actress in film and television and a story editor for Miramax Films. I believe she said she was in All My Children. She was in that soap opera. So she talked about her book today called The Ruby Falls. So Ruby Falls is when a little girl is abandoned by her father in a cave. Can she grow up to be healthy and whole? Eleanor Russell is an actress at the top of her game when scars from a childhood wound begin to unravel the threads of her life. Fired from her show, she bolts to Europe and marries a man she has only just met. 
Back in Los Angeles, desperate to create the perfect life, new husband, new house, and his starring role in a Hitchcock movie me, remake, Eleanor believes it's all coming together, but her stability is threatened when her husband reveals a sinister side. Secrets from the past are unearthed, and the spectator of the cave becomes unavoidable. So, she went on first. I liked what she was saying. I was like, hmm, maybe I'll take her book home today. You know, they sign the books or whatever. But I'm like, ah, well, let me hold off. Let me see what the other two authors, what, you know, let me hear what they have to say, right? The second author was Robert, Robert Cacuzzo. He lives in Boston with his wife, Jenny, and daughter, Vienna. He is the author of the he is the author of Tracking the Wild Kumba, The Life of Legendary Skier Doug Combs, as well as the longtime editor of the N Magazine and a contributor to numerous publications. Prior to beginning his writing career, Cocuzo studied at Boston College High School, the College of Holy Cross, and St. Andrews University in Scotland. After graduation, he became a U.S. Coast Guard certified charter captain and traveled extensively around the world. When they're not in Boston, Cocuzo and his family split their time between Jackson, New Hampshire, and the island of Nantucket. So his book that he talked about was The Road to San Donato. It's an adventurous travel memoir of an American father and son tracing their Italian heritage by bicycle. When he was telling us this story, he was talking about his grandfather and stuff. Um... With only the bare essentials on their backs, author Robert Cacuzzo and his 64-year-old father, Stephen, embark on a torturous 425-mile ride from Florence, Italy, to San Donato Val di, di Comino, an ancient village hidden in the Apennine Mountains from which their family emigrated a hundred years earlier. After getting lost, beaten down, and, and very... Uh, and very nearly stranded when they finally finally reach the village the Kakuzos discover so much more than their own family story he actually talked about his family name was carved on one of the rocks and this is going back to when the Jews had to hide it's going back to like the Holocaust so although that wasn't a hundred years ago, but he just, it was just, I guess maybe I didn't pay attention to that one that as much, so, but it was interesting. Maybe you should look it up. <laughs> Anyways, so. I might look into that one a little bit deeper. I'm doing <laughs> so the last one that I'm going to tell you about, the last one is the one that I want to read and I want to listen to the audiobook. Very, very, very intrigued. I left the office being like, wow, what an amazing woman. Really? So this one, <sighs> Dr. Barbara Roberts. MD was the first woman to practice adult cardiology in Rhode Island. She graduated from Bernard College and Case Western Reserve School of Medicine. She completed a cardiology fellowship at the Brigham and Will I can't even talk. Brigham and William Brigham and Women's Hospital and since 1977 has been on the clinical f faculty at the Albert Medical School of Brown University, where she founded and directed the Women's Cardiac Center at the Merriam Hospital from 2002 to 2016. She is the author of How to Keep from Breaking Your Heart, What Every Woman Needs to Know About Cardiovascular Disease, Treating and Beating Heart Disease, A Consumer's Guide to Cardiac Medicines, and The Doctor Broad, A Mafia Love Story. Dr. Roberts resides with her husband in Jamestown, Rhode Island. So, Dr. Roberts, obviously all these hospitals, I'm in the health field, that really got to me. 
Oh, good, you're on your way, perfect. One step closer to me getting mommy's car back. So the doctor, broad, right? This is the book I wanna read. It's a mafia love story. This is what, yes, this is why my phone went to voicemail because I'm over here trying to encourage people to read some books. Okay, so the Dr. Broad is a true story. Ha. Huh. It's about a devout Catholic schoolgirl who grows up to be a physician, an atheist, a feminist, an anti war activist, as well as a mob doctor and mob mistress. The man she keeps alive and out of prison is Raymond L. S. Patri. Arca, the longtime head of New England Mafia boss. This is not just a mafia story. This memoir traces Barbara Roberts' life story from a now vanished world almost to the present. Her commitment to feminism and medicine leads her into unexpected byways. She travels a path she never foresaw into moral dilemmas she never envisioned. It is the story of a woman born into one world who comes from an age in another, who expects to live one life but finds herself ad-libbing something very different and who faces challenges undreamt of by her mother while providing a new paradigm, parad I can't even say, paradigm for her daughters. When she spoke, I was like, God bless this woman. Like, seriously. I was like... I don't even know if everything she spoke about at this meeting today was in that book because I know she said that when she first wrote it, it was like 500 and something pages and she had to trim it down. It's like 260 pages. And I'm like, just being a native Rhode Islander, knowing the history of Rhode Island, having friends and families that are associated with the mafia and like, you know, like... Uh, the stories she'd say how they went to the Coast Guard house and her four-year-old daughter was singing with the with the boss from the mom and I'm saying they're like this is so fucking funny but she loved caring for people and taking care of people and it's like I don't know like you'd have to read it you really would have to read it and then how she became like the mistress to the mob uh, leader number three and everything had to be a secret and she was married and she had a, a kid and her husband just tried to take her for everything she had and you know how she earned her medical degree and she's the first woman for cardiology in Rhode Island and she went to conferences and she networked and she, you know she grew herself and they it's just I don't know I was just like I'm so fascinated by her story and what she had said that honestly I would encourage anybody to grab one of these books and we had books for at the end of the event that were signed by the authors and we gave them out to any of our guests and that one was gone it was just the connections. I mean, Rhode Island's so small, everybody knows everybody. So everybody's connected in some shape or form, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, you know, goes into like Mass, Connecticut, New York. Everything, there's all kinds of t ties, you know? And even how it brought her out to Las Vegas and stuff like that. So I was just kind of like, well, can I just listen to you tell the story again? It was, it was phenomenal. I'm going to read that book. So it's called The Doctor Broad. And that one is A Mafia Love Story by Barbara H. Roberts, M.D. So that's what I really wanted to do is come on here and tell you guys all about the book and author event. I left and was like, oh, I got to go listen to it. All right. Excited to know that my daughter's on her way with the new tire. We're gonna put that on the car. So are my mom. So are my sister. The sun's shining. 
I got my sip and think mug. Apparently we need personal growth, trust, and an ideal partnership. But most of all, we need to follow our desires and live as long. Oh wait, I fucked that one up. <laughs> we have to follow your desire as long as you live. Fucking A, god damn it. Did I just take the Lord's name in vain? I guess you gotta follow your desire for as long as you live. No matter what obstacle may be set in front of you. Have a good day, everybody. It was so nice to do another sip and think since I haven't done it in a while. Have a good night.